For this quick tip, I just want to show you how to remove a password from Windows with D7X. This is intended for a system that you cannot access because all the user accounts are password protected or the only user account is password protected. Basically, this is different from the option from the user's menu where you can just simply remove all user passwords. And this differs because obviously you can't run D7X if you can't log on to the system. So what we're going to you do is use D7X from the offline tab. The offline tab is intended for targeting partitions other than the currently running operating system. For example, you use this tab when booting from a Windows PE boot disk or attaching a customer's hard drive to a TechBench computer. Once you have that hard drive attached or you're booted from the WinPE boot CD, you'll go to the offline tab and then you'll see password removal. We have Locksmith. Just simply click on Locksmith. Now this gives you a bunch of words and I'll just kind of go over this really quickly with you. In Windows XP and Server 2003, this basically operates differently than it does in Vista through Windows 10. And what it does in XP and Server 2003, when you install Locksmith, once you boot to that hard drive from the customer's machine, Essentially, you'll still have the password prompt, but you should just wait for a minute and then hit enter with a blank password prompt and it will let you in. In Vista and Server 2008 and above up to Windows 10, however, what we have to do is run a separate program and that separate program will allow you to remove the password that way. What we're going to do is run that program by replacing the utilman executable which launches when you click on the accessibility icon in the lower right corner of the screen and that utilman will pop up a little prompt that enable you to remove the password from the user of your choice. In Windows XP it, it removes all user passwords and it's important to note in Windows 10, Windows 8 and Windows 10, this does not work with Microsoft accounts. So I'll go ahead and get started. We'll remove, make the modifications It'll just ask you to confirm, make modifications to the E drive. That's our target partition. I should also go over, if you haven't seen the offline video, you need to point the target partition to the drive before you run Locksmith, to the drive that you need to run Locksmith on. That should automatically populate when you click on the offline tab, but it is only a guess, so just don't let it select C you know that C drive or if you're from a Windows uh, PE boot disk, sometimes it's X drive. That is your currently running operating system is not what you're trying to operate on. Okay, so now that I've made the modifications with Locksmith, it's time to boot up our other system. So I will need to shut down this system and remove the hard drive. Once our system is started up completely, we're going to go to log in. And you notice you still have your password for the user Mr. Who, which is the only user on this system. What you're going to do at this point is click on the ease of access icon or the accessibility icon in lower versions of Windows as it's called. Give it just a moment. And now we have D72 Locksmith has popped up a prompt. This does still say D72 Locksmith, and that's because the code has not needed to change since D72. So we just have a list of users that we can remove the password from. It should be automatically populated, and you'll have the checkbox in there. We'll just click Do It, and it says Completed Password Removal, and it is, un and it is undo <laughs> and undo system modifications. So your system is now no longer modified to launch the executable from the ease of access icon. So the next time that you reboot, this will no longer pop up. So now with our password removed, just click into the empty password field and tap enter. And we've logged in with no password. It is also important to remember this does not work on Microsoft accounts, online accounts. This will only work on local accounts. It may work from a domain account, but you will need to be attached to the domain for that to, to function. Hope this video has been of some help to you. Thanks for watching.